Hello and welcome to my Secret Place Devotion. Today we're going to look at a topic called the bridge and we'll read our text Romans chapter 5 verse 1. I read from the New International Version. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I always like to read it twice. So I read it again. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to help you to build a bridge. Why is the bridge important and what kind of bridge are we building? I'll answer the first question. Why is the bridge important? Now, we need to build a bridge because the redemption has two sides. The two sides of redemption, one side is the legal side of redemption. The other side is the vital side of redemption, which maybe I'll use another word, is the experiential side of redemption. So redemption has two sides. Number one is the legal side. Number two is the experiential side. What is the legal side of redemption? The legal side of redemption talks about the things that are legally yours. In other words, it talks about the things that Jesus has done for you. It is legally yours. The other side, which is the experiential side, talks about what you are currently experiencing. Why do we then need to build a bridge? We need to build a bridge because for many people, the difference between the legal side, that is the difference between what God has done and what they are actually experiencing is very different. For some, the bridge is so wide. For some, it has thinned down a little. So today, God wants us to build a bridge to help the legal and the experiential side to come together. Let me give an example. The Bible says, by his stripes you are healed. So legally, healing is yours. But in terms of experience, you're still carrying cancer or fiber or earache or one thing or the other. So you see, there's a difference between the legal side for many people and the experiential side, which is what they're actually experiencing based on what God has done for them. Again, the Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. For many people, they see that they're actually the tail and not the head. The Bible says that you are dead to sin, but many people see themselves still living in sin. So you see, there's a difference between the legal side, what is legally yours, and the experiential side, what you are actually experiencing. So today we're going to build that bridge to help you to narrow the gap between what is legally yours and what you're experiencing. It's important because for many people, when they notice that bridge, this is what God said in his word. But this is what I'm experiencing. They get frustrated and some of, some people even turn their backs on God. So rather than turning your back on God, we want to be able to help you narrow the bridge. And then some people just blank their mind. They say, well, this is what the Bible says. I'm not experiencing it well. You know what? I just don't want to think about it. And then they live in a state where even though God has paid for something or Jesus has paid for something or something is Yours, they deny themselves the access to those things and Jesus is not happy because if you're going to deny yourself access to those things then why did Jesus even bother dying or paying the price for you because the price that Jesus paid is very heavy so you kind of decide to ignore it or deny yourself access to the things that Jesus has paid and bought for you so the bridge between the legal side and the vital side there are actually four wrongs you know every bridge has wrongs you know that that define the bridge or a ladder has wrongs so for you to climb from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder, you need to climb four rungs or five rungs or six rungs, depending on how big the ladder is. So the ladder between or the bridge stroke ladder, whichever one you want to use, that takes you from the legal to the experiential actually has four rungs on that particular ladder. Number one is information. First of all, you have to have the information of what is legally yours. Because how can you access something that you don't even know is legally yours? Do you know many people do not even know that they are meant to be the head and not the tail? Many don't even know that the Bible says that in exchange for our poverty, has been given, we, have been, uh, we have received the blessing of God. Do you know many people don't even know that legally, favor is there as legally. But they go about in life experiencing this favor, not understanding that favor is legally theirs. Success is legally theirs. But in terms of experience, they may not be experiencing it does not mean that it's not legally their own so the first wrong or the first step that builds the bridge is number one having the right information how can you have the right information by studying the word of god the next 
is beyond information. You have to have revelation knowledge. What is revelation knowledge? It is in, in the simplest term I can find. I've tried to look for a simple term. It is a dawning on you, a dawning on you or a deep realization of something. And it is not done by with your brain. It is the Holy Spirit that brings revelation knowledge. All of a sudden you have a revelation or you have a deep understanding or you have a deep knowing that this thing is yours. My pastor always says, nothing is yours until you understand it. And that's how God designed the scripture. Reverend David Will, he always says that nothing in life or nothing in the Bible is yours until you understand it. What he means by that is nothing in the Bible can actually become yours to touch and handle unless you have a revelation. So beyond having information in your head that by his stripes you are healed, you need to have a revelation knowledge. This happens in your spirit. Revelation is when the Holy Spirit brings a certain knowledge, a certain awareness to you that this thing is actually yours. So the first step is having the information by reading your Bible. The next is now when that thing becomes a revelation to you. So by his stripes we are healed is not just something you're reading. By his stripes is now something that has dawned on you that are you serious? I'm actually healed. I'm not going to be healed. I'm actually healed. It is not something that your senses can give you. It is something that the Holy Spirit imparts to you. So you, to be able to change from information to knowledge, you need to ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. You need to tell him, Holy Spirit, Give me a revelation knowledge of this information that I already have. Because many people, all they have in their brain is information. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I will never die or I'll be, you know, all those funny, funny um, information that they have. It does not produce results unless it is transformed from information to revelation knowledge. And it is the Holy Spirit that helps you to transform that thing from being just information to revelation knowledge. I hear a lot of people do say, I can, um, I'm what, I am strong. But you know, even as they are saying it, they are taking drugs. So it's just information. I will not be sick. It's just information. By his stripes, we are healed. It's just information. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to translate that thing from information to revelation knowledge. Then the third step is put your faith to work. Remember the scripture we read. If I read it again, you see he says something. He says, therefore, since we have been justified, how? Through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, again, into this grace. In other words, for each being to experience what the things that God has done for illegally, you need to get your faith to work. So when you have the information and it has not become revelation knowledge, you need to believe that this thing is yours. So what is faith saying? Faith says, act, say, talk and act like this is yours. Let me give you an example. One time I was really ill. So I was lying, I was ill, I was shaking. That was some years ago. I was shaking, I was really cold and feeling very, very ill. And it just dawned on me, by his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. I lay there having a revelation knowledge that by his stripes I'm healed. I was like, are you serious? Guys, I'm not going to be healed. I'm actually healed. Jesus has already paid the price. So on the cross, he took my sickness on the cross. But the fun thing, I was still lying there. Then the Holy Spirit now spoke to me and said, if you are healed, would you, what do you, See, well, how he told me, he said, how do healed people behave? Do they lie down covering themselves? I said, no. He said, what will someone that is healed do? I said, he'll get up and move about his normal business. He said, so if you are healed, then behave like a healed person. Get off from that place. So I got off from there. The moment I got up and I just went to the kitchen to try and find something to eat, all of a sudden I started sweating. Why? Faith. Act as though that thing is real. That thing is yours. So if you are sick, how do you get, how do you come from the legal to the experiential? Put your faith to work and faith talks about what? Action. If you're holy, do you have, would you have a pornographic site on your phone? No. What would someone that is holy do? He would delete it immediately. If you're poor, how do rich people act when they are rich? They, do they hold their money? Do they keep their money to themselves? No. What do they do? They give it out. They sow seed to God. They help other people. So if you have a revelation that you are not poor, you are rich because of what Jesus has done, what do you need to do? Act as though you are rich and then you're going to see that you know, come into manifestation. The fourth wrong is to verbalize it. I've done a lot of work on verbalizing the things that God has done. Speak God's word in, inside of you. Speak God's word. Proclaim it everywhere. You keep on speaking God's word. Yes, it might initially be information. Initially, in your brain, you might be saying, yes, I'm strong. Yes, I'm strong. And at that point, it's still revelation. But the more you say it, remember what we talked about the inner man? And the more you say it, it is being absorbed in your human spirit. It is being absorbed. After some time, when that word has filled your spirit so much, it, be, it becomes a reality for you, especially if the Holy Spirit is helping you. So let's deal with the four wrongs of leading 
of taking you from the legal to the experiential. Number one, what do you need to do? Have information. Do go through your Bible. You see the information of what is regally yours. Then you ask the Holy Spirit to translate the information to revelation because it's the Holy Spirit that will do that. You know, as you begin to pray, because how do you access revelation only through prayer? As you begin to pray, your spirit man is open to have revelation on certain things. So is there any area you're struggling? You're not seeing the result. You're seeing it in the Bible. It's not result. It's not having an effect in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit, give me the revelation of that this thing is actually mine. Step three, put your faith to work. What do I mean by that? Act as though that thing is really yours. Because faith is a verb. It's an actual word. You don't have faith in your mind. Faith is an actual word. Put action to what you actually believe. And then you verbalize it. Keep on declaring God's word. Keep on speaking God's word. You're going to find out very soon that that will become your experience. It will not be long. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of days. You will begin to experience it. So anything you want to experience, begin to say. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. In other words, the power to experience the things that are legally yours is in the tongue. Don't keep quiet. If there's a popular saying that says that if anybody has bound that has bound your mouth has bound your destiny. And that's so true. Whatever you cannot declare openly will never ever be yours. A wise man also says you cannot get to the palace talking like a peasant. If you're going to the palace, talk like a king. Don't talk like a peasant. Say the things that are yours. Keep declaring God's word. Ask the Holy Spirit for revelation and you're going to begin to experience all that God has done for you. You're going to find out that the bridge between the legal and the experiential is very, very narrow. God bless you. I expect that you begin to experience all that God has done, all that Jesus has purchased for you, all the benefits of redemption. This week we looked at the fact that, you know, the moments that changed the world. We talked about how that you're justified. We talked about how that, you know, you're healed and all of those things. But today the Holy Spirit wants you to not begin to experience it. You have the information if you've listened to us from Monday till today, but from today I want you to begin to have the experience. The Bible is real. The only difference between what you're seeing in the Bible and what you're experiencing is just the things that I've mentioned. So everything you see in the Bible is actually real. There are people that are living that life. God bless you. Have a beautiful